Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's video, I'd like to help answer the question, which of the DJI Mini drones might be right for you? And this is a question that we've gotten from so many viewers over the last few weeks, ever since the Mini SE was released, because it looks a lot like the original Mavic Mini, but it's got some of the features and functions of the Mini 2. So people are asking, should I buy the Mini SE? Should I still try to find a Mavic Mini? Or should I even go for the Mini 2? And it can be a little confusing, but I'll spend some time today talking primarily about these two drones and the differences between them, because they're similar, but there's some really important differences between them. I won't spend too much time on the Mavic Mini, because if you've watched the websites, the Mavic Mavic Mini has slowly disappeared from a lot of the websites out there, and really there's no reason to buy a brand new Mavic Mini when the Mini SE is on the market because it's a whole lot less expensive. Now, if you're already flying the Mavic Mini, keep flying it. Don't stop flying it. There's no reason to upgrade to the Mini SE because it's a great drone and it flies really well. But if you haven't bought a drone yet, what I'm trying to do in this clip is explain which of these two might fit your budget and might fit your needs for flying. So before I get too deep into it, I thought I'd give you a little bit of a history lesson of where all these drones came from and why DJI's released the three drones. So way back in November of 2019, DJI decided we're going to build a drone that's under 250 grams because that number is really important. In certain parts of the world, if you have a drone that's under 250 grams, you don't have to worry about registration and testing and regulations and all the other things that heavier drones have to deal with. So when you bought this drone under 250 grams, in most of the countries outside of the U.S., you could fly it, you didn't have to register, it didn't have onerous insurance requirements. It was just a fun drone to fly. But what DJI did, which I thought was brilliant, is they took most of the functionality of their larger drones and somehow with a shrink machine stuck it into a frame that was under 250 grams. So when this drone first came out, it completely blew my mind because I put it up in the air thinking, there's no way this drone's gonna fly like my bigger drones, but it did, and it did really well. It could fly far, it had great video, it had great stabilization up there in the sky. The drone itself could shoot both 2.7K video at 30 frames a second and 1080p at 60 frames a second, had a three axis stabilized gimbal. It used enhanced Wi Fi technology between the controller and the drone, so I could fly this thing on paper anyway, four kilometers away. I found that I've got about 1,500, 2,000 feet out of it with great reliability. The only downside to this one was that it wasn't great in really strong winds. So it could handle a level four wind, but if you got it up to two or 300 feet and the wind really kicked up, it had to fight a lot to stay with the wind. And it's the only drone that I can honestly say. I had a couple of instances where I almost had a fly away where I'm watching the video and I'm thinking the drone's going this way and all of a sudden it starts to go this way. So if that ever happens to you, the first thing you want to do is don't panic. Take a breath, lower the drone down, get down to 50 or 60 feet, certainly flip the camera down below you to see what's below you, but come down to 50 or 60 feet and get you out of the turbulence that are up there at those higher heights and then you can fly back home. And that's exactly what I did. But anyway, all that aside, you shouldn't be flying a drone this small in those heavier winds anyway, so shame on me, but the drone was fantastic. The other thing that was interesting about it is DJI decided to go with a lithium ion battery, which was the first for them. Most of their drones use a lithium polymer battery, so it was the first time they used a lithium ion battery. And me, again, thinking through it as an engineer, that's part of the reason that the drone had trouble with the wind, because the primary difference between lithium ion and lithium polymer is that this has more punch to it. So when you require more current from that battery, it can deliver it. This one is great at holding the current for a long period of time, but sort of delivering it in a very orderly fashion. It doesn't like big bursts of draw of current from it. So I think when they moved to the Mini 2 by using lithium polymer, this one is way more stable in the wind. It can actually handle a level 5 wind. So if you're flying on windy days and you get up to two, 300 feet, this one can handle those kind of winds. I'm not saying you can fly it in a hurricane because obviously none of these drones are going to survive that, but you'll be a little safer with this one. All right, so November 2019. November 2020, they released the Mini 2. Now, what they did with the Mini 2, number one, is they dropped the Mavic moniker. It's no longer called the Mavic Mini 2. It's just the Mini 2. But they improved a lot of things about it. So, for example, this one can shoot 4K video at 30 frames a second, 2.7 and 1080p at 60 frames a second. It also can transfer that information from the sensor up front back to the processor, 100 megabits a second, 40 megabits a second over here. So it's a much more capable drone for processing that video and capturing more of that video. It's a fantastic uh, airframe to actually capture pictures and video out there. They also upgraded the controller. 
This is a brand new style of controller. I'm calling this the Gen 1. This is the Gen 2 controller. What's other, the other difference between these two right here is that this worked on enhanced Wi-Fi, which is great, but this works on OcuSync, which is a much more reliable technology. It's more powerful, and it actually gives you better synchronicity between the controller and the drone. So this one can fly 10 kilometers on paper. Now, I'm not saying you should fly at 10 kilometers, because again, in the US, I say this every time, we have a visual line of sight requirement where you can't fly it further than you can see it in the sky. So for me, that's about 2,000 feet out with a beacon on it, but it's rock solid at that distance. This one is as well, unless I get into a really crowded area with a lot of Wi-Fi interference, or if I'm flying in a heavily wooded area, because the trees, if you drop down behind a tree, I've talked about this before, trees have a huge water content, and radio signals have a hard time penetrating water, and that's why submarines have to surface and put an antenna up to actually transmit out to the outside world. If you duck down behind a tree that's got a lot of water in it, and most trees do, it's, it's almost like a Faraday cage where it's going to block that signal. So both of these work really well. This one is a little sketchier around trees and high Wi-Fi interference. This one is rock solid. So really the fundamental difference between these two was better in the wind, further transmission distance, better quality video, a little longer flight time, 31 minutes versus 30 minutes, but it was a lot more expensive. It was $150 more expensive when it was released. So this one hit the market. And again, these are available with fly more combinations, but the basic drone with the controller, a battery and some accessories was $399. This one was $549 originally, and they dropped it down to $499. So $399, $499. Between these two, if people ask me, which should I go with? If you have the budget, I always recommend the Mini 2. If you didn't have the budget, go with the Mini 1 or the Mavic Mini. Now, where it gets complicated is they just released the Mini SE. And people thought, well, that's going to be an upgrade to the Mini 2. It's really not. It sort of fits. I'm going to do a little bit of a shake here. It sort of fits between these two. So the, the Mini 2 has got OcuSync technology. You can record 4K. This one has lithium polymer batteries, just like the Mini 2, but it can't fly as far because it's using enhanced Wi-Fi. So it's very similar in that respect to the Mini 1, which means you'll get about four kilometers of distance out of it. Now I've been flying this like crazy over the last week and a half, and I love it. I've had no issues whatsoever with signal breakup, video breakup, delays, any of that nonsense. It's just been working really well, and it uses the same controller as the original Mavic Mini. The other thing that I like about this, which is something they've definitely enhanced, is if you look closely, the props on this one have those white tips on them, they're standard props. When they came out with the Mini 2, they came out with these high efficiency props that are a little bit quieter. So when you're flying these two side by side, this one you can hear at 100 feet. This one is almost silent at 100 feet in the air. They're using the same props on the Mini SE, which is a big improvement. And then I thought, well, let me look at the motors because the motors here look very similar. So my suspicion is you've got an airframe that looks like the Mavic Mini, but you've got the motors, the props, and I believe the ESCs from the Mini 2 in the Mini SE. The other thing is the Mini SE can handle a level five wind. So I put this one up in the wind, had a bit of a flyaway start, brought it down, put this one up to the same height, exactly at the same place I was flying, had no issues with the wind so whatsoever. So it's a much more robust quad when you're flying in heavy wind conditions. And again, don't take these things out in gale force winds because you can't beat the wind. It can only fly about 15 meters a second. So if the wind's whipping more than that, the drone's gonna be a slave to the wind. It's gonna fly whichever the wind's blowing it. But if you get into those situations, drop it down again to 50 feet and fly back home and you should be okay. All right, the other big difference between them is that change the architecture a little bit. So the frame size is different on these two. So if you own accessories from the Mini 1, and for whatever reason you decide to go to the Mini SE, a lot of the accessories won't fit. Like the landing gears are different, a few other things are different. So it's much more like the Mini 2. But where I'm going with this, I guess, is this guy is pretty much done at this point. So if you own it, fly it, it's a great quad. These two are the active quads that are in the market today. So your choice is really between the Mini SE and the Mini 2. So when people ask me which of the two should I go with, this one's around $4.99 in that ballpark, $2.99 for this one. So if you're just starting out in the hobby, this is a fantastic drone at that price point because you're getting three axis stabilized gimbal, you're getting four kilometers of transmission distance, you're getting live stream 720p feeding back to your phone so you can see what the drone sees. You can record 2.7K at 30 frames, 1080p at 60 frames. It's a fantastic package for $299. It's GPS and GLONASS positioning control. So if you put it up in the air and you take your thumbs off the joystick, it's going to stay right where you left it. Whereas a lot of the drones that are in that ballpark from other manufacturers have a ton of drift. And I tell you, when you put them up, if you, if you put the drone up, it's going to start flowing this way or flowing that way. And you've got to fiddle around with it to sort of lock it in position. This is just a fantastic drone. Now, the difference between them, the choice I should between them is 
if you're not going to shoot really professional videos, you're not concerned about 4K video, this one's perfectly fine. If you need the OcuSync technology, this one provides to give you a little stronger signal because maybe you're flying it a little further or you've got better eyes than I do and you can fly it a little further out, then the OcuSync is a much more reliable technology between the two. But essentially, the only difference between these two drones is the fact that they both can fly at a level 5 wind, 4K video over here, 1080p over here, or 2.7K over here, Gen 2 controller, OcuSync technology, Wi-Fi or enhanced Wi-Fi technology over here. But again, for the difference in price, it's totally up to you which of those two makes sense. To be honest with you, when people ask me that are starting in the hobby, which drone should they go with? If you have the budget, go with this one. But if you're just getting started, $300 is a lot of money to put a toy up in the air and pray that it's not going to fly off on you. But this one will stay right where you put it. It's not going to fly off on you. And what's cool about it is you can start with something like this at $299. And if you really fall in love with the hobby, which I did and a lot of people do, you can always upgrade to something bigger later on. Or if you decide, I got to start recording 4K video because I've got to get that better quality of picture, you can probably sell this secondhand, get most of your money back, and upgrade to a Mini 2 or a Mavic Mini, I mean a Mavic... Uh, Pro or Mavic Zoom, whatever larger quad that you want to look at, or an hotel or an Afi, whatever you want to fly. But you can start here, and all of your stick controls and all of the things you learn on flying this drone, you can definitely apply to other drones out there. And a lot of my uh, viewers have said to me, they started off with the Mavic Mini and they loved it so much that they bought a larger drone and then had their son or their daughter or their wife flying this one when they went out for an afternoon. And I love that kind of stuff because when I'm out there flying alone, it's a lot of fun, but it's a whole lot more fun when the family's coming along or my buddies are coming along and we can all fly together and hey, let's go take a look at that end of the lake, or hey, look, there's something over here. Fly your drone over and take a look at it. It's just a whole lot more fun to be out there with the family and the beautiful sunshine and that fresh air. So anyway, you can start here for $299. This one, I think it's around $500, around $499 at this point. So, you know, maybe maybe $449, but about a 50% about a uplift in cost for this one. My recommendation, again, at the end of the day is start here. You can always upgrade to this later on if you want to, or maybe start here and upgrade to a bigger drone down the road. But anyway, that's all I had for today. I hope you found this clip helpful. I love flying. And anytime I can talk about technology to help you make better decisions, if you're going to get into the hobby, I'm happy to do that. If you have any questions about anything I've covered today, drop those in the comments below. I promise to get back to you as quickly as I can. I'm also out flying a lot. We got a little bit of summer left. And I love putting drones up in the air. So anything I can get outside where it's sunny, I'm out there flying. If it's raining, I'll be sitting down answering questions, but I'll do my best to get back to you. If you need any accessories for these quads, uh, we have a website. I talk about it occasionally on the channel. We make accessories for all the drones that are out there, in particular the, the mini series of drones, both the Mavic Mini, the Mini SE, and the Mini 2. So there's a link below where you can check out the website in case you need something. And if you make a decision to go with these drones, I've got a link below to Amazon where you can go and check them out for yourself and compare them against each other. If you use that link, we get a little contribution from Amazon. So if you want to help out the channel, that's a great way to go. And the last thing I'll mention is that I can't say what it is or when it's coming, but there are other drones coming that we're going to be reviewing very soon. We're going to be signing some NDAs on a couple of things. So just to keep you interested, there's a lot of really cool stuff coming on the channel. So if you haven't subscribed to Drone Valley, what are you waiting for? Hit that little icon down there and join the Drone Valley family because you're not going to want to miss all the reviews we're doing on drones and all the other high-tech stuff that we're going to be exploring exploring over the next couple of weeks. And that's pretty much it for me today. So thank you so much for watching. I sure hope you're enjoying the videos. And until next time, <laughs> happy flying.